Hi, welcome back to a new video where I'll be talking about healthy oils and fats and the ones that should be best avoided. I'll also be giving you my top three that I personally love to use. Keep watching. Hey, so welcome back to Little Health Hacks where I share with you my tips for leading a healthier lifestyle. My name is Angie and today I'm going to be talking about oils and fats and the process in which they are made. So first of all, let's go through the most common oils and fats that you use in most homes that you buy in the supermarket. And most people will go and they'll buy a sunflower oil or a vegetable oil, uh, canola oil, soya bean oil, all these types of oil that you will find in the supermarket and they will usually be packaged in clear plastic bottles. Now, most of these oils are used heavily around the world, in most cases genetically modified and treated heavily with pesticides. They are then treated to unnaturally high temperatures where they oxidize and turn rancid. It then goes through a chemical process to extract the oils. It then goes through a further heat process and a bleaching process to improve the color of the oils and then it gets deodorized in order to mask the really disgusting smell. Without doing that, it would smell disgusting and it would look disgusting and no one would purchase it. So they put it through those two further processes. Now that's just to make those common oils that you buy in your supermarket. When you go and purchase a tub of margarine, it goes through all that process and then it goes through another chemical process in order to make it turn solid and so that you can use it as margarine. Now I think it's very important that we all understand how our foods are made because, because if people knew how things were made and what they're consuming, I know for me, when I heard that and when I read that, I did my best to avoid those oils at all costs because I don't want to be consuming something that has been that has gone through all that process for me it's just common sense not to want to put something in your body that is as unnatural as that now with that being said there is another reason why most of those oils uh, should be avoided and that's because most of them contain very high levels of omega-6 and either very low levels of omega-3 or no omega-3 and you've probably read how we should decrease our omega-6 intake and increase our omega-3 intake. The reason for that is basically omega-6 is highly inflammatory in the body and omega-3 is highly anti-inflammatory in the body. So omega-6 causes more havoc in the body. It can contribute to inflammatory diseases, whereas omega-3 has the opposite effect and it's health promoting in the body. Now, these oils, generally have a very high imbalance. So if you're consuming a lot of these oils, then you're also consuming a high amount of omega-6, which is not doing you any good to your body. So it's try, you wanna try and seek out oils or seek out a general food that is high in omega-3 in order to bring the balance back and to either get it on a one-on-one -on -one level or if better, just to get have a higher intake of omega-3 which is very health promoting in the body. Now, the way I look at things is I like to look at how our ancestors used to eat and how they prepared their food and what they did in the olden days because more research is showing actually even these days that our ancestors had the right idea and they knew what they were doing. For thousands of years, generation to generation have been taught how to prepare their foods, how to raise their animals, and how to grow their crops. If you look back to our great grandparents' days, you would see that most of them ate a organic, free range, pasture fed, whole food diet, which is what most people who are looking to be more healthy these days are looking to purchase. And that's going back to traditional ways of how our food has been grown and prepared and consumed. So, a more traditional form of oil extraction would be cold pressing. So oils that are cold pressed, virgin or extra virgin, are generally the same type of oils that our ancestors made and consumed. 
And not only that, they also cooked in fat. They cooked in animal fats like chicken, goose, duck fat. They cooked in tallow, beef tallow. They cooked in butter. And these are very traditional methods of cooking. More recent research have shown that these methods of cooking is actually more nutritious for you and it doesn't make you fat, which is what is what you probably learn in school and what they used to tell you. So actually they used to say eating fats made you fat, when in actual fact eating animal fats and vegetable fats, basically if you're eating those fats as part of your meal, it actually slows down the nutrient intake. So it's, that basically means that the body will absorb the nutrients slower, which means you will feel fuller for longer. And you're less likely to start snacking on food and snacking on biscuits and snacking on whatever because you actually feel more fuller. You've had like a hearty, good, wholesome meal, which is actually full of vitamins and is essential for normal growth. So for instance, I personally love to cook in butter. Now, butter is actually one of the best fats you can cook in. It is very nutritious for you and for your growing family. So I cook nearly all my toddler's meals in butter and butter is full of vitamins, including vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K and vitamin E so good for you and it's so good for growing children it's essential for growth it's essential for healthy bones and the development of your brain and of your children's brains it was a staple in the olden days and it's a staple still in a lot of traditional societies around the world and it has been used for thousands and thousands of years and it is completely natural and now one thing I'll quickly say on butter is you can get a butter that's quite white and you can purchase a butter that's quite yellow. Now you want to choose butters that are yellow because that will indicate that the cow has been grass-fed and that is the natural way a cow should eat. So another variant is uh, ghee. You can purchase ghee in the stores these days that is used in traditional Indian cooking which is clarified butter. That's also very good and very healthy for you to cook in and to consume. Another thing that I love to cook in and that has slowly been making a comeback is coconut oil. Now you want to buy cold press, virgin or extra virgin, preferably organic coconut oil. Coconut oil has so many benefits. It's anti-inflammatory, it's antiviral, it's antibacterial, it's antioxidant. It's fantastic for your hair, it's fantastic for your skin if you want to put it on your skin. It's great even for your kids and your babies. You can put them on your baby's skin. If he has dry skin, you can put extra virgin cold press coconut oil and just rub it gently on your baby's skin to help relieve the dry skin. It's fantastic for your hair and for baby's hair. If they've got that scalp problem, you can put that on your baby's hair. Now, it's fantastic for that, but also is fantastic to consume. You can have it by a spoon if you want to just have a spoonful of that to give you that extra boost or you can cook in it like I do. It generally comes with like a mild taste of coconut so it works really well in curries and Asian style cooking and it works lovely and delicious in your cakes and biscuits. So I use coconut oil for baking and for low to medium heat frying and also in curries and Asian cooking. I also sometimes add a tablespoon to my smoothie to give that extra boost. So cold pressed is basically a traditional method that they used to use to extract the oils. It hasn't gone through any high heat process, hasn't gone turned rancid. It's a natural, traditional way of extracting the oils. And that's why you wanna try and purchase cold pressed oils where possible rather than those highly processed, high heat oils, chemically treated oils, bleached oils, all those oils that are very bad for you. You wanna try and seek out cold pressed oils. I mean, some of those oils that I mentioned before, like sunflower oil, can be purchased as cold pressed. Coconut oil is definitely my number two go-to 
for cooking. And my number three is definitely cold press extra virgin olive oil. Now olive oil everyone knows is quite healthy and good for you so I'm just going to give you a few tips on how to choose a good quality brand. Now first of all you want to purchase your cold press extra virgin olive oil in a dark green bottle. So something like this, you see it's very dark green. The darker the better, you can actually get bottles that are much darker than this, this is empty at the moment. But basically what that does, it protects the oils from sunlight and prevents it from turning rancid. So olive oil is generally very delicate oil. It doesn't do well with heat so well, so it's better saved for dressings because it can turn rancid at low temperatures. So you wanna save them mainly for your dressings, your salad dressings, and at a push to very low heat frying. So the first thing is you don't wanna purchase an olive oil that's in a clear bottle. Even if it's a glass bottle, you don't wanna purchase one that's in a clear bottle because that can turn rancid very quickly. Second tip, you want to check the expiry date. Now, extra virgin olive oil has a general shelf life for about one year. So you want to purchase one that's as fresh as possible. Next is you want to always store your olive oil in a cool, dark place away from any heat sources to keep it as fresh as possible. Another thing is if you look closely at your bottle, you will see there is a percentage. Can you see that? It says 0.5%. Now, basically you can get oils that are 0.4%, 0.5%, all the way up to 0.8%. The lower the percentage, the less likely they will turn rancid. So you wanna try and choose an olive oil that has a percentage of 0.4 to 0.5%. They do tend to be slightly more expensive than the 0.8%, but it's worth it and it's healthier. And that's the kind of olive oil that you wanna choose and consume. Another thing is lastly, you just want to taste your olive oil. So once you find a brand, purchase it, take it home, or if they let you allow you to try it before you buy it, great. But if you take it home, taste it. It should have a pleasant peppery taste. If it tastes off at all, you want to take it back to the store and say, I'm sorry, this is off and return it, get a refund. Try a different brand until you find a good one and stick with that brand. Those are my top three that I prefer to use. So I hope I've given you a lot of information and a lot of things to think about and things to research even, look into it and make more informed choices in your life and in your family's life on how you cook. Don't just assume that because an advert said or something said that canola oil is very good for you and it's healthy and it's low fat or whatever it is that that means healthy. People have an association with healthy eating and low fat. Now, if you go back to what I said before, eating high fat foods as part of your meal actually makes you fuller for longer and less likely to snack and doesn't make you fat. So if you think about the opposite and having low fat food, it actually doesn't fill you up anymore. So people who do consume a low fat diet are actually more hungry. And how long can willpower last to not have and not reach out for a snack and not reach out for those extra calories and those extra carbs or whatever it is. Willpower will only take you somewhere. You need to eat foods that are actually nourishing for your body, that's actually healthy for your body. There's nothing unhealthy about them. If you're cooking with it as part of a meal and you're choosing ones that have been grown traditionally, ones that have been raised traditionally, and you're actually consuming oils and fats that are health promoting in the body. Whereas the alternative is consuming things that have been highly processed and only after so many years they've discovered that actually it doesn't work. Eating that diet, eating a low fat diet actually doesn't work and in some cases can have the opposite effect. So I say you want to consume full fat produce, not produce that are labelled as low fat. So you can actually read the ingredients of the low fat and you read the ingredients of the full fat. 99% of the time, the full fat, you will see there's been le very little things added to it. Whereas if you look at the low fat of the same produce, you look at the low fat version, it's gone through a process or sugars have been added or some things have been added to it, which is not natural and not healthy. Try and consume a more natural diet, 
and that is my version of healthy. So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe below. Also, please hit the little notification button next to the subscribe button so you get future updates of any videos. And with that, catch you on the next video. Bye.